and I also liked it until I saw the other looks. Mama, let's get into this look, but she's got some tough, tough competition ahead of her. Hello, my beautiful life brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crayon in the box. If you guys are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Okay, y'all, as one season of Drag Race and another one begins, and that is right, we just got the promo look for All Stars 9. And by I mean just recently, I mean like probably like a week or so ago, but I am just getting to this video now and I am just cappuccino up on my filming. So with the new season of Drag Race, we are gonna be doing another edition of my favorite game. That is right, we are talking about Fab or Drab, where I rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars 9, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I will let you know who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. And we will be doing these queens in alphabetical order. So first up, we have Angeria Paris Van Michaels. And Angeria is coming out in this sort of like white and gold goddess look with this beautiful hair and flowy fabric. And like I said, she looks like a goddess. And she looks like an angel coming out of thin air and she is looking uh, fabulous. Already first look, first queen, and I am so, so, excited because this is looking exquisite. We've seen a lot of alt queens come back for all stars and sometimes they're hit or miss, but spoiler alert, a lot of these are hits because mama, did they ever turn it up. I love the gold detailing. It definitely feels more angelic. It definitely feels religious. I don't know if that's what she was going for, but that's what I'm reading into it. As if the dress wasn't amazing on its own, she also paired it with this giant hair with these spikes. It's really giving you that sort of like moon goddess or sun goddess from a tarot card. And I am loving this whole vibe. All in all, from head to toe, this is the most excellent, a great drag that I love. And it is definitely gonna be a fab. Next up, we have a Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming out in this black and white look. So we already know that Gottmik is known for her black and white face, but she decided to take that idea and bring it all over. She's come out in this black and white bodysuit with all of the intricate detailing in it, pairing it with her signature mug and this big black coiffed hair. Now, most times I would say a bodysuit for a promo look, girl, no. But if you're gonna do a bodysuit, this is how you do a bodysuit. It is both revealing and sexy. It got a little bit of an edge to it, but it also feels super new and interesting. It doesn't feel like your basic bodysuit. And that is what I love, love, love about this. On top of it, she said, you know what? Since I'm gonna give you a basic bodysuit, I am gonna come in with the craziest, coolest hair. She's got this black hair with these like spike thing, horn things coming off of it and it looks so exquisite. Gottmik knows her fashion and knows her proportions because she's like, you know what? I'll be I'll be very sim simple in the body and give you the biggest hair. I like that the shapes of the hair match the shapes in the body. I think that this is a very cohesive and Gottmik is saying, I might have been gone, but I am still that fashion queen. All in all, this is an excellent look and definitely gonna be a fun. Next up, we have a Georges, and Georges is also coming out in this sort of bodysuit-esque uh, vibe. She's wearing this blue fabric that cascades around her body in just the right ways, giving you a little of that peekaboo and a little bit of that Georges vibe. She's continued the theme by having the flowy fabric all around her to create these gorgeous pictures and movement. When I first saw the look, I really liked it. And I really liked it because it felt like Georges, but it also felt like an elevated version of Georges. And I also liked it until I saw the other looks. Once I saw the other looks and saw how much the queens really turned it up, this one kind of felt a little bit recessive and basic. And that's sort of like the gag because this is considered basic. Girl, what? If this is any indication of what the season has to offer, I am 
so excited. But let's get back to George's. Although she is not the most va 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 boom or interesting out of all the queens, it is still a great look and definitely made to perfection. And that is why for George's, I am also going to go ahead and give her a va. Next up, we have Nina West. Nina West is coming out in a sort of blue iridescent bodysuit with these silver detailings around her hips and shoulders. She's paired it with this blonde hair, and she is definitely fitting the theme. Or at least I think she is, because I actually have no idea what this theme is supposed to be. Now, here's the thing. This is one of the best I've seen Nina West look. Nina is usually more of a campy queen, a little bit wild. So this threw me off that she went in this direction, because... I've never seen Nina do this sort of like sexy vixen vibe. That being said, I feel like I've seen this version of this bodysuit done on so many local queens. I'm shocked to see it on an all-stars edition of RuPaul's Drag Race. Maybe you can get away with it for a regular edition, but you can't get away with it for an all-stars, let alone the promo of all-stars. This is when everyone gets to see you for the first time. So while I do feel like this is the best Nina has looked, I don't feel like it measures up to the other queens. And because it doesn't measure up to the other queens is the reason why I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Plastic Tiara. Plastic Tiara is coming out in this purple mermaid style uh, dress with all the intricate, ornate, oriental detailing all over it. And then she's paired it with this giant hair. Mama, let's get into this look. The dress itself is uh, gorgeous. It's got so many details and so intricate. I would love to see this in person. It really feels and looks haute couture. As if the dress wasn't beautiful enough on its own, she's then paired it with the biggest hair and it took a lot of the same detailing that was in the dress and brought it up to the hair. Mama, this is expensive hair. I guarantee that she paid a couple of grand for that wig alone because that is that ain't cheap. That is some good ass work. All in all, there is nothing to say to this look because it is pure perfection. And Plastique looks like a goddess. I feel like I'm gonna use the word goddess a lot in this episode. All in all, she is freaking fantastic and 100% gonna be a ah! Next up, we have Roxy Andrews, and Roxy is coming out in this orange flowy dress with this rhinestone bodice and these giant headpiece. In comparison to some of these other queens, this does feel a little bit simple, just because it's got a lot more fabric and not a lot of those intricate details. That being said, I still think it is amazing and gorgeous. I also feel like this fits Roxy's vibe because Roxy is more of a pageant queen. So this does work for her. I really love the detailing on the top of this dress. It really looks super elegant and really a nice contrast between this flowy fabric. She decided to pair it with flat hair, which you would think is kind of like a no-no, but then she did this giant headpiece with these wings in it that definitely gives me like Aries vibes and I think it is so genius. The one thing that I am getting about Roxy is that she's not going to be the one that gives you everything all at once, but she knows how to style and pair things together to make them look like a cohesive look. All in all, I love this dress also, and it is definitely gonna be a ah! Next up, we have Chanel, and Chanel decided to go in a little bit of a different direction, and instead of giving you like goddess of the air, she's giving you like goddess of the water, a little bit of a sort of Poseidon vibe. She's coming out in this a blue dress that's got blue and gold detailing on it and the bottom of the dress has got a lot of these like giant tentacles on it that's giving me a little bit of those like Ursula vibes but done in an elegant and fashion sort of way which I'm totally digging. She then decided to pair this with flowing fabric. It definitely feels like fins of a fish because you got the little scales and little detailing into it and I'm thinking smart move and as if that wasn't enough she's also come in with this giant headpiece. All in all I love this look. I think it is so cool. Poseidon is actually one of my favorite like Greek gods. So I kind of like that she's taken a little bit of Poseidon, a little bit of Ursula, a little bit of drag and made it her own. I think this is uh, super well done. I don't know where she's gonna get any other use out of this because it doesn't look like she can walk out of it, but I don't care because for a picture, 
It works, mama. And that is why she is getting a five. And last up, we have Vanessa Vanji Mateo. Vanessa's coming out in this gold little dress with these gold heels that are strapped up in a sort of like gladiator vibe. She's paired it with this gold fabric that gives you her wings. Now, normally I would say a little dress for a, a promo outfit is not the way to go, but this little dress might just be the exception because there's so much detailing in it that it makes it feel really expensive and unique. On top of it, it fits Vanjie's vibe, which is a little bit more of like this hood ghetto vibe, which she likes to push in all of her drag and it fits her personality. So I like that she's been able to maintain her identity even in this type of theme, which might not have been her original choice of theme. On top of it, she looks sexy AF, and I just needed to call that out because girl, look at her. All in all, again, no comments. This is freaking amazing and 100% gonna be a bug. And that is it for this promo. That is right, we are only getting eight queens this season. Originally, I was a little bit miffed that we were only getting eight queens, but seeing the level that they are bringing to the promos does get me excited for what they're gonna come. I don't mind if you have less queens if the level is this good because honestly, I basically fabbed pretty much everyone and this is some of the best drag I've seen on Drag Race, period, point down. So. It has me excited. Speaking of excited, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So, my drab of the week this week has to go to... Nina Aww. West. Girl, this shouldn't have been a surprise. Nina was the only one I drabbed on this series and therefore got my drab of the week. I am very curious what she will do all season long, but she's got some tough, tough competition ahead of her. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to... Plastic Tiara. Girl, there were so many really great looks and this was a hard choice for me. I loved Chanel's, I loved Angeria's, I even loved Got Mix. But ultimately I decided to give it to Plastique because Plastique was done from head to toe, no comments, would have never thought of it myself, just looks stunning and doesn't look costumey. All in all, this is a drag a perfection and 100% getting my fab of the week. And that is it for this episode. Do you agree or disagree with my comments? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Y'all, do you guys want to see me do the full season of All Stars 9? I'm really debating if that's what you want to see from me or something else. Uh, if you do want to see the, the full season, go ahead and let me know in the comments as well. I am looking for suggestions and I do read all my comments. Anyway, once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.